David Copperfield, said Mr. Dick, who did not appear to me to remember much about it. David Copperfield? Oh, yes, to be sure. David, certainly. Well, said my aunt, this is his boy, his son. He would be as like his father as it's possible to be if he was not so like his mother too. <laughs> his son, said Mr. Dick. David's son, indeed. Yes, pursued my aunt, and he has done a pretty piece of business. He has run away. I'm delighted to be with India's best-loved English writer, who's probably also India's most prolific writer, and the only writer I know who's been writing non-stop for over seven decades. We all know that you've won many awards, the Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan, the Sahitya Academy Award for Our Trees Still Grow in Dehra, and of course the John Llewellyn Rees uh, Award for your debut novel. Mm. But before all of these awards, there was an award that you received uh -huh. from Lord Mountbatten. Yes. Would you tell us about that? Oh, well, I was at school and boarding school, of course, up in Simla, what was then Simla, now is Shimla. And uh, <clears throat> I must have been in, uh, we called it the fourth form, but it was actually class 708. And <clears throat> This was 1948, and Lord Mountbatten was still in India. He was Governor General, I think, wasn't he, for a year or two? Yes. Simla was still the sort of, or had been the summer capital up till the time of independence. So you had still had the Viceroy's house, Viceregal Lodge, and uh, he'd been invited to our school Founders' Day. And as the special invitee, he was, he made a speech and he gave away all the, the prizes for that year, the scholastic prizes. Huh? And of course, I'd won the school's essay prize. It was called the Anderson Essay Prize, which I think I won for two or three years running. Wow. And um, so I was called up to the stage to receive it from him. And I was a very small boy and he seemed very tall. I, I guess he wasn't all that tall now that I look back, but uh, for a small boy, he did seem huh? very tall. And he was, I think it's still in, he was in uniform. So, you know, it was, I was uh, a little overwhelmed, um, but that was it. I was, I've, I've been very fortunate to have lived in the, in the years leading up to independence and then seen it happen and then continue to be a citizen of this country for another 60, 70, I don't know how many years. Yeah. <laughs> But I, yes, I remember that. And that was my first, you could say, my first award or prize. It was a book. And yes, it was a biography of Charles Dickens, I remember, by Heskett Pearson. And I read it with great interest because I was already a Dickens fan. I'd read David Copperfield, which inspired me, no, no end. And I'd read um, Nicholas Nickleby and Oliver Twist and even the sketches by Boz, which were very interesting. Today, at the age of 86, I struggle a bit to read Dickens, but when I was a boy, I lapped it up. <laughs> yeah. uh, David Copperfield, I mean, the book is really yes, thick unabridged, one. I read <laughs> <Yeah>. unabridged. <laughs> so. uh, but fascinating, because although Dickens went in for melodrama to some extent, uh, because he had to stretch out these novels into parts, into published parts, but his gift for creating characters um, and humorous situations and, uh, and he, he was a great actor too and he would later on in life give performances oh, I on didn't stage, know that. Uh, taking the role of all these characters he'd created, including the, the horrific murder of Nancy and Oliver Twist, you know, and it sort of wore him down. He, he overworked and he died in his 50s when he could well have lived on another 10, 20 years. Well, David in David Copperfield, the, the book I read when I was 12 and set me off as a young writer. Uh, he runs away 
from London where he's been put to work in a shoe blacking fa factory when he's just 10 or 11 years old and he walks all the way to Dover and um, reaches the house of his aunt Betsy Todd who doesn't know him really though she's heard of him and um, I'll read on a bit. My aunt, with her hands behind her, walked up and down the room until the gentleman who had squinted at me from the upper window came in laughing. Mr. Dick, said my aunt, don't be a fool because nobody can be more discreet than you can when you choose. We all know that, so don't be a fool, whatever you are. The gentleman was serious immediately and looked at me. I thought as if he would entreat me to say nothing about the window. Mr. Dick, said my aunt, you have heard me mention David Copperfield. Now, don't pretend not to have a memory because you and I know better. David Copperfield, said Mr. Dick, who did not appear to me to remember much about it. David Copperfield? Oh, yes, to be sure. David, certainly. Well, said my aunt, this is his boy, his son. He would be as like his father as it's possible to be if he was not so like his mother too. <laughs> his son, said Mr. Dick. David's son, indeed. Yes, pursued my aunt, and he has done a pretty piece of business. He has run away. Ah, his sister Betsy Trotwood never would have run away. My aunt shook her head firmly, confident in the character and behaviour of the girl who never was born. Yes, said my aunt, with a grave look and her forefinger held up. Come, I want some very sound advice. Why, if I were you, said Mr. Dick, considering and looking vacantly at me, I should. The contemplation of me seemed to inspire him with a sudden idea and he added briskly i should wash him because <laughs> <laughs> so, he was pretty grimy after his yeah. long uh, escape from uh, his bondage in london and the aunt was also the aunt is a great character yeah. and she appears off and on throughout the novel and uh, when david has his first marriage and he marries this sort of child woman who's very impractical and and the aunt uh, uh, <laughs> tries to teach her how to cook but uh, so aunt betsy trodwood is one of the more lovable characters in a book full of lovable characters mr dick is one of them he's half-witted then as mr micawber with whom um, david has to stay when he's in london <laughs> Micawber's based on David on Dickens's father, who went to a debtor's prison. Yeah, he fell into debt, as many people did in the Lon London of those days. <clears throat> and um, the whole family had to live in the prison. If you went to a debtor's prison, you took your family with you. Yeah. So Dick Dickens learnt a lot of London life and of, of the difficulties of a... Uh, what you might call a lower middle class family, not exactly a working family, although he was put to work. And um, he got a sort of a f bits of education, but he taught himself, as probably many writers have done. Uh, and of course, he f finally grew up to be a, a law court reporter. Uh, he, he, that, again, he learned a lot about life and uh, and the law courts of London because all the criminals were brought there and he was a newspaper reporter for two three years till he started writing Pickwick papers which took off immediately and made him famous <coughs> right and that was his first book and a, a comic book hmm? some of his later books were sad books so. yeah. yeah and David Copperfield it's sad it's funny it's something yeah. it's it's a book, uh, it's a good one to start with if you're going to read yeah. Dickens. It, it gets darker on later in his bleak house and great expectations and even his last unfinished novel, 
the mystery of Edwin Drood, very dark. <clears throat> uh, because then his life was getting darker too. But in Copperfield uh, and Pickwick papers, huh? he was mm, at his, you might, inventive best as far as characters go. And he, Pickwick he, had Sam Weller. Sam Weller. Uh, who, and his father. Tony. <laughs> hmm? yes. His father was Tony. Tony Weller. And, and then it, it, yeah. it had all those me members of the Pickwick Club. Right. And the fat boy. Yeah. <laughs> and others. Yeah. Um, but all his novels had at least half a dozen. So he, he's memorable used characters. A, quite, uh, the number of his characters are, of course, Cockney, and they speak Cockney English. Cockney, because he was a Londoner. He yeah. grew up in London, and most of his, although he traveled later to Europe and America, but he would walk about London, so he knew the city inside out. The financial area, the courts, the uh, the East End. Our mutual friend, uh, which I would have liked to have read, read the opening to you because it brings the whole atmosphere of the city and the River Thames to life because it, it opens with this barge coming down the river and two or three criminals in it. So it's, a, it, it's one of his less known novels, but one of the most readable our mutual friend mm. okay i mm. haven't uh, yeah. come across that one no, from no, his book. It, yeah. it's uh, one of his later novels yeah um, uh, but uh, it's it evokes the london of that time beautifully mm. right mr bond thank you very uh, much my, my. It was Thank you, I enjoyed it. You made me talk. Uh, I, Normally, I'm a very silent person. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm really, really fortunate that mm. you opened up and you were very, very sporting about it. I'm the English nut. Bye for now. I'm the English nut. Bye for now. I have a special announcement to make for the fans of Ruskin Bond which is uh, the launch of a new venture called the Ruskin Bond Collections, uh, which consists of uh, signed copies of his books, uh, combinations of different books, books with objects like uh, this uh, lovely stuffed toy. Timothy the Tiger Cub. Timothy the Tiger Cub. So you're going to find all this and more if you go to www.ruskinbond.in. Mm -hmm.